Tuesday night when we had that big storm, we got about eight and a half inches of water in the whole basement of the rectory. And I was just so frustrated. What do you do? It just kept rising and rising. My sister had just finished completely repainting the entire room and all the shelves and the floor, and it looked like a brand new room. Now it was covered with muck and mud and dirty water, and oh, you get frustrated. So of course, Ron Clipjack came and he went down and was trying to push it around, and finally it started to subside by itself. I guess the problem is that the, the volume was too great and the sewers don't hold the water, so it all backs up. So then they spent all day yesterday cleaning it and getting it all back to shape, and tonight, at what, 4.30 or so, the rain came and it all came back in again. And I just went, Lord, why are you doing this to me? And I turned the television on, and of course we have a new security system, and so it was blaring like crazy, and the thing was flashing water in the laundry room, water in the laundry room. I couldn't turn it off. And then finally, the security people called, and I said, I'm here, turn the thing off. And um, so they did. Now I can't turn it back on. But while I was complaining about myself and feeling mad about myself, I saw the news with all those homes in the Midwest that have been totally destroyed by 17 tornadoes in the last few days. And I thought, how can I complain with a little water in my basement when these people lost their entire homes? I guess we never have to look too far when we're complaining, do we? We never have to look too far to see people that are probably very much worse off than we are at a certain given point when we think we're the world's ending. Um, so it's, it's a lesson learned. I told God I was sorry for getting mad and st start praying for the people that lost all their homes in the tornadoes. So now I'm completely off the subject of the scriptures, but way back in the last century during the great immigration, um, when people were coming from Europe in droves, it was a situation where a man would have to make a decision. His family was living in poverty. There was no way he could continue and promise them a good life in Europe. And so he would go by himself and say, I'll come back. I'll go and get things ready and I'll come back and, and send for you. Um, so he left wife and children back at Europe and went off to the United States. In many cases, there were some wonderful success stories where, where men were able to get economically on their feet and be able to send their send for their families and provide for them a, a happy life in the United States. In the gospel tonight, Jesus is getting ready to, to telling the apostles, as we just read three times in a row, I'm going away. I'm going away, but it's for your good and I will come back. I will come back and be with you. And they don't understand it. Um, Jesus knows that he's got to make a journey and that journey is through death, through death to everlasting life. And he is going to prepare a place for them and for you and me in the kingdom of heaven. And he promises that he will come back and take us with him. We can be sure that he will keep that promise. Every time we come up to communion and procession, the procession reminds us of the journey of life all of our life, day by day by day, we're processing towards the banquet table of the Lord in eternity. And as we come up to receive Jesus in the Eucharist, we have a unique experience that he could be with us in that most wonderful way through the Blessed Sacrament. And so we need to be confident that the Lord is always with us no matter what we're going through. And even though we may have sufferings in this life, he promises us a life of eternal joy in the kingdom of heaven. So we always have to keep our sights fixed on that's the journey we're going through. And so when we suffer setbacks of one kind or another, we have to remember that the Lord walks with us and he's not going to abandon us. He'll get us through it somehow. And I think that's the message of the scriptures tonight. Um, the apostles, now he's going to ascend into heaven. That's the next big feast is, it's, it would have been today, but it got moved to Sunday. So Ascension Sunday is this coming week. And the Lord is going to, they're gonna see him ascend into the heavens. 
and they're going to be afraid again. But then it's a time for us to pray between Ascension and Pentecost every day for the coming of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will come again and give us the graces we need in our time. And so the apostles would hide again um, and they would be afraid. But then when the Holy Spirit came, he filled them with such hope and such enthusiasm that they could go out and keep preaching the gospel no matter what. And we hope that that same Holy Spirit will give us the strength in our day to, to persevere through the difficulties of our time in the world and in our church. And, and that we should go ahead with confidence knowing that God will bring th all good things together for our good. Tomorrow is the feast of the visitation of Mary to uh, her cousin Elizabeth. It's a wonderful feast day. We see our Blessed Mother who's just found out that she's pregnant. <clears throat> and what does she do? She doesn't think about herself. She goes to help her elderly cousin, Elizabeth, who's now six months pregnant and she's up in years. Mary just goes to help her. She doesn't stay home and say, oh, I'm gonna be sick and all that. She just goes and does it. And it's another lesson for us. And then there's the great meeting between Jesus and John the Baptist in the womb of Mary and in the womb of Elizabeth. It's a wonderful feast day and much that we can learn from our Blessed Mother and Elizabeth too. So not only is the Lord with us, Mary is with us as well. And that should bring us great confidence. Let us stand now and offer our prayers and petitions. <clears throat> 